3D Gaussian spotting has been around for just about a year now. Can you believe how many advancements we've made throughout a year? Like last November, we introduced the world's first 3D Gaussian spotting for Android phones. And then we introduced the world's first 3D Gaussian spotting editing and cropping tools. And then we give the world its first 3D Gaussian spotting to mesh algorithm so you can finally use the 3DGS results in your favorite 3D software. And today, guys, we are about to make the 3D Gaussian spotting much better. I am so thrilled to give you the Kiri Engine version 3.12 with loads of 3D Gaussian spotting updates. First things first, let me show you our proudest feature in this version, 3DGS to mesh 2.0. The team has done so much to achieve this state-of-the-art result. Like, when I first saw the demo, I was in shock, man. It almost made our infamous 3DGS to mesh 1.0 look like a joke. You know what? To learn more about how we achieved this, let's go take a field trip and go ask the man behind the curtain himself. So we are here at CUHK in Shenzhen, um, which stands for the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Shenzhen Campus. And we are going to visit our dear friend, CJ. Hey, good to hey. see you, man. How are you? How are you? Good. It's been good. a long time. Yeah, so I know you and Chris and our engineer team has been working very closely for this 3DGS2 Mesh 2.0. And I must be frank here, I was freaking blown away by the result when Chris first showed me the demo. It was, it was so next level. So I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, back a half a year ago, we are trying to find a way to simply convert 3D Gaussian to Mesh. And that was the version 1.0, right? Yeah. And even that, that was a pretty popular. Like we got 33K views on our YouTube. And I think it still holds the record on our YouTube channel. Yeah, happy to hear that. We also have more than 1,000 people like our rap post on GitHub. But this 2.0 though, the idea is more than converting Gaussian splitting to Mesh but rather generating the mesh during the Gaussian spatting training process. Technically, it's not the Gaussian spatting method that we most know of. Wow, so we basically remade our own 3D Gaussian spatting? Yep, you have seen with how much improvement we have made in 2.0. Actually, we take inspiration from the professional 3D scanner. You know how they generate very dense point clouds to make surveys better. In 2.0, we also have similar effect because we have integrated a lot of SOTA method. What's SOTA? SOTA means the state of art, which also means the best of the date. But that's not it. You know, 3D scanner can reconstruct dense point, but they cannot work on transparent and reflective surface, right? Yep. But we have our own techniques called the reflection remover and SOTA normal predictor that can make GS reconstruct those hard surface well. We sincerely thank the author of 2D GS and Miss Setting for provide such excellent work and a lot of useful advice. And we're gonna open source it, right? Yeah, we are plan to open source it in Go Studio Repo at the end of this year. All right, CJ is actually one of the most talented engineers I've ever met. And the Gal Studio he just mentioned is an open source ongoing modular framework. It provides codes and easy implementations to the Gaussian plotting related works. It makes developing and implementing Gaussian plotting algorithms so easy. I'll put this GitHub link in the description area down below, so feel free to go grab it. Now, back to the office. Another really cool feature I'd like to show you is this new remove background in the 3D GS scan. You know how you always get the whole 3D scene from the 3D Gaussian plotting using existing methods? But what if you just want to keep the main 3D object and delete the background? Before, we had a cropping feature that you can manually do the cleaning, but now, guess what? You can do it automatically with this remove background toggle. Pretty neat, right? Now, let me show an example to try both 3 gs to mesh 2.0 and remove background. Alright, let's try to scan this cute cubone together. When using this remove background feature, the best practice is to include the entire object in the camera frame while we take the video. And my habit is to do three rotations to cover the middle, top, and lower angles of the object. 
And then at this uploading page, we are going to turn on the remove background and the 3 dgs to mesh toggle. And another change we did to this version is that if you have the 3 dgs to mesh turned on, you will see a separate mesh model being created in the scan list while having the 3 dgs in the 3 dgs list. Yo, when it's done processing, check it out. This is the 3 dgs model with the background automatically removed. Look how clean it is. And this is the mesh model. Unbelievable. Holy crap, look at, look at the surface quality, man. It's, it looks almost the same as well from a 3D scanner. Holy crap, look at this, look at the detail. You got the little dent, it captured it really good. All right, guys, you think this is it? I'm actually leaving the best to the last. Yo, Joe. Yo. Yo, do you want to come and talk about our Blender add-on? Yeah, man. Let's All right, go. let's go, man. Yep. Hey man! Yo, how's it going? Very good, very busy. Yeah, I know you're super busy recently uh -huh. uh, making these Splendor add-ons. And I know some of those were like pretty big hits. So the updates I've been posting recently. Yep, on Twitter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So in total, the update for the 3DGS render add-on has got like 1,800 likes Whoa. and 97,000 views in a couple of weeks, which nice. is just crazy compared nice. to usual. I know we've been having this 3DGS render you know, add-on for version one for yep. a while. Yep. And I know you guys have been working on a version two, right? Yep. And do you want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. So, well, you know, when you open Gaussian Splats in the app, yep. And they, they just look amazing. They, they look, look beautiful. They look much better than other 3D scanning methods. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just like reality there yes. in your hand. Yes, exactly. But if you're a Blender user, the next question is, okay, cool, what do I do with this? How do I bring it into Blender? And the answer is, you don't. So that's why we made version one. So thankfully, some people much smarter than me on our team developed a node group and a shader which made version one possible, which brought a Gaussian splat into Blender and I could see it and I could render it and it looked amazing and I was so happy. It still felt amazing, but I want something that artists can say, I have a PLY file, I wanna make a cool render, I don't want any problems in the middle. So we made version two, which aims to do three things. One is improve the speed, two is give the artist full control of the objects. Yep. And three, have a workflow from beginning, PLY file, to the end, make a cool render. The last time, like I remember from the version one, people were kind of complaining about, yeah, this kind of slow camera thing. And sometimes if it's change the camera angle, everything messed up. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of nuts. And even sometimes rendering, things didn't want to update. But one of the major things is making the object editable. So wow. Before, if you went into edit mode, you had this insane <laughs> train of infinite faces. Now, you go to edit mode, it looks like what you expect. Anybody can use their own modifiers and edit it like an, a normal object, which means we can incorporate some modifiers directly into the add-on, like camera culling, like decimation, like crop boxes, editing by colors, and too many to mention. You can support full depth of field in your Gaussian splats. So if you have a focus object yep. and you want to focus on that, you yep. can do it. And you can essentially reframe and re-photograph the world you've scanned Whoa. in the software again, which Whoa. is which nice. is why we want the add-on, right? It's why you want to bring it into the book. That's awesome. And how far are we from finishing it to be available for everyone to download? Oh man, it is coming, I believe, in the next week. In next week? Nice. So we're gonna launch it together with the 3.12? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. sweet, baby. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. uh, you wanted to mention something about the Black Friday sales? Oh yes. All right. I'll, I'll do that right now. Thank you so much, Joe. All right, man. All right. Take All right, easy, keep busy, dude. man. All right. You know, once a year, we use this holiday season to roll out our biggest sale of the year campaign. This is the kind of Kiri Engine Pro discount that you won't be able to find anywhere else. This year, we are doing 55% off the Kiri Engine Pro yearly plan. It's only like three bucks a month. And what's more exciting is that if you got this plan and stay with it, your Kiri Engine Pro will forever renew at this discounted price. That's a big deal.
And if you're already a Kiri Engine Pro user, if you purchase this discount, you will automatically get renewed at this new discount price in your next billing cycle. And same idea, your future pro plan will forever renew at this price until you cancel or switch to a different plan. By the time this video goes live, the sale should already start. So go up the Curie Engine app and enjoy this sincere offer from our entire team. And I'll see you in the next video.